Okay, so welcome to part three of the water management videos. Um, this is the brew day video, and um, first job on brew day for me usually is to add my dilution water. My water is so minerally that for most recipes I need to add some reverse osmosis water, as you'll have seen in the earlier videos. So I add this first, just to be sure that uh, I've done it. I get my reverse osmosis water from uh, an aquarium supplier. I discovered that um, our brothers and sisters in arms when it comes to water management are fish keepers and aquarium keepers. They're the other hobbyists that are as obsessed with water content as we are. So I discovered that I could buy 25 litres of reverse osmosis water for about £3. Now you can buy domestic RO units if you wish. Uh, but you obviously have to buy them, they use a lot of water. So if you can get to uh, an aquarium supplier, check them out. They do sell, mine do sell two types. Uh, one type's already got some minerals added for the fish, so make sure that you buy plain reverse osmosis water. So I'm going to add that uh, to the mash and sparge and then I'll be back. The next job for me is the acid additions. You may or may not need to make them. I'm using phosphoric acid, 75%, because that's what I happen to have. Phosphoric and lactic acid are the commonest acids used in brewing. Um, you've got a number of options for measuring. You want your measurement to be accurate. You could get yourself a little uh, measuring cylinder. It's only really accurate for whole um, mill measurements, but if your acid's quite dilute, that might be the easiest thing. Perhaps the cheapest and quickest are syringes. Get a, I've got a 5 and a 1, so if I need to add 3.5mm, I'll do 3mm on that one and half a mil on that one. Just squirt them in and flush them out in the water. Or if you do acid additions a lot, as I do, it might be worth investing in a pipette, which is the way proper chemists would do it. It's just quick, super accurate, quick uh, and easy. So those are your options really. I'm going to uh, add the acids and then I'll be back to talk about weighing out the mineral additions. Let's check the pH of the sparge water. 7.75 of untreated sparge water. I'm going to make the acid addition then we'll check it again. Okay, I've added just 4.13 mil of acid to what is nearly 18 litres. Well, 20, 21 litres actually with dead space. Will it really have made that much difference? Remember I'm looking for about 5.5 pH and you can see there 5.43. So we've successfully acidified the sparge water with just 4 mil of acid. Okay, let's talk about adding the mineral additions now. To do that they need to be accurate, so you need to get yourself one of these uh, micro, set of micro scales. They really are incredibly cheap on, on Amazon. When you do get yourself a calibration weight, this is a 100 gram calibration weight, because they're so sensitive you need to calibrate them every single time you use them, or even if you move them, check it, and if it's not reading exactly what the weight is, go through the calibration. Okay, so I need to add some gypsum, calcium sulfate. So what I do is, I use the lid, I put that on there, press the tear to set that to zero, and then I can measure into the lid. So I'm going to put my gypsum in. Just tap it like this, to get the amount that you need. That's that was lucky, it was spot on. Then we'll add it to the uh, the water. Okay, when adding your minerals to the grain the unit, um, leave the basket out because the minerals, particularly the gypsum, are not very soluble. What you're going to find is they're going to sink to the bottom. So tip them in and wash the container. Make sure you've got everything off there. Give it a good stir. Have the circulation on because that will help circulate and get things dissolved. Also warm your water up a bit. Gypsum's solubility is maximum at about 35 degrees, so get your water to around there. Uh, add your gypsum and other minerals. And keep stirring until you can see that there's nothing, uh, no powder sitting on the bottom. 
each time you make a water addition tick it off on your report sheet it's easy to lose your track and forget what you've added and what you haven't added okay let's talk uh, pH management the more I've read and watched the, uh, YouTube videos about water management the more I've been impressed about how important pH management is so I now take pH measurements fairly regularly through the process including the finished beer and record it I think the finished beer pH can be quite a significant influence on the perception of the beer <clears throat> you've got two options really one is to use test strips uh, if you are going to use test strips get some like this that are in a restricted range these just go 4.6 to 6.2 so they just cover the um, brewing range really um, they go up in quite big steps though, it's 4.65, 5.4, 5.8 so you really you want to be, for most beers, between 5 and 5.4 but they served me quite well for quite a while uh, until I invested in the pH meter, that's your other option pH meters are quite expensive um, but I think if you're getting serious about uh, water management they're, they're a good investment you also have to invest in the calibration uh, liquids to keep them calibrated and store them correctly uh, in storage solution. Because I manage, uh, because I measure the pH fairly regularly at different points, I just keep my meter stood on brew day in a little jar of storage solution. It's just the easiest way to look after it and um, be, be ready to use immediately. So in a few minutes I'll be testing the mash pH for the first time. Ok I've taken my sample of water out at 10 minutes. So let's have a look. Brewing water predicted a mash pH of 5.31. Put it in. Give it a swish around. Wait for the little clock symbol to go off so it's finished measuring. There, 5.31. 5.31 within a hundredth of a pH meter, bang on what um, brewing water said. So I've got no complaints about that. Rinse off the electrode, back into a storage solution until I need it next time. Turn it off. While the mash is running, let's just talk about water reports because, of course, water reports are a critical part of your armory really. So the thing to do is to go to the website of your water company or contact your water company see if you can find a water report. Certainly in the UK they're obliged to provide them. Uh, my tip is to look for a downloadable one because I've noticed I've looked at a few company water reports now out of interest. This is a Leeds one and I've noticed that they often publish a summary one uh, on the web page itself for things that domestic users are interested in like water hardness but if you follow find a link to download the report often it's much more detailed as this one is uh, for Leeds. Um, the one thing that often is missing I find is total alkalinity uh, you could contact the company and ask them if they can provide it I did that with mine and they said well we've given you total hardness, it's not the same thing, you know, don't, don't be uh, fooled by that. If you can't get total um, alkalinity <clears throat> there is a test that you can get and again it's from our soul brothers and sisters, the fish keepers, Sally Furt's uh, carbonate hardness and alkalinity test, a profi test, these are on um, Amazon plus other places. I think this does something like 50 tests. Um, it's a simple titration test and I might do a short video showing how to do it uh, in the fourth of this series. Um, so if you've got most things but you haven't got your uh, alkalinity, you can get one of those test kits. There are some ele electronic colorimeters as well that you can get that are a bit more money but make the job a bit easier. Um, if you haven't got any of that, then your options are find a local home brewing club or a local friendly brewery who probably have got a water analysis that, and if they're in your area perhaps it will be the same or you can buy a water analysis the online uh, brewing suppliers several of them provide a kit that's about £30 
send you some vials, you send it off to a lab, you get your uh, water report back. So, so those are your options really, but getting a decent water report is, is key. Also your water may vary over time, so I do check the alkalinity of mine using that test kit, even though I've got you know, a reference point, just to make sure it's still in the right ballpark, or if my pH wasn't where I expected it to be, one of the first things I would do is check the alkalinity of my water to see if that's changed because as the seasons pass some water companies draw water from different aquifers uh, aquifiers and those uh, the content of that water could vary so I'll finish the sparge and we've got the boil underway so I thought I would test the runoff at the end of the sparge you remember that we want to avoid the uh, grain bed becoming too alkaline so we acidify the sparge water so this is the, I just lifted the grain basket off and collected some of that runoff at the end. So let's see what the final pH was of the liquor coming out of the grain bed. 5.65. So we're uh, inside the safety zone still. Um, a little bit alkaline though isn't it? So over the 5.6 that uh, of, of the mash range that we want, but that's okay, we're well away from pH 6 or above. So that's, so that's brood egg done. Um, hit my numbers. We are at 40... 45, something like that. I was aiming for 44, so I'm happy with that. Got 23 litres in the fermenter there. Let's just have a look and see what the pH of the final beer is before fermentation. Just rinse off the electrode there. waiting for the meter to settle. There we are, 5.33 pH. So I shall record that and monitor the pH changes during the fermentation and then into the final beer. So I um, hope that's been helpful, that's the end of this series of three on uh, water management. Any questions at all uh, post below in the comments and I'll give you some links to brewing water and the pH meter that I've got etc. Okay bye for now and uh, happy brewing.